What's up everyone, welcome back to this video, and today, I will be breaking down the recent official teaser of the movie Thor Love and Thunder, and now, let's begin the video without further ado. Finally, the long-awaited first teaser trailer for Thor Love and Thunder has been released by Marvel Studios, and it revealed a ton of new footage, easter eggs, and some new stuff. These hands were once used for battle. Now they're but humble tools for peace. I need to figure out exactly who I am. The teaser started with a running young Thor transiting to teenage Thor with his classic outfit from the comic and transiting again to an older version of Thor running. Then the teaser transited again to another shot of Thor, walking in the flames like a badass while saying, These hands were once used for battle. Now they're but humble tools for peace. Then he planted the Stormbreaker like a small tree. Groot's arm made the axe handle in Infinity War, and it makes great sense if he planted it back in the ground. In the next shot, Thor is seen meditating on a planet, which I think is Vanaheim, which appears in Thor the Dark World, but I am not sure because there seem to be three suns and a planet with rings. Then, we see his face and you can still see the scars that Hela gave him during their fight in Asgard. Ooh. Now you remind me of Dad. He might also get a new eye from Rocket to match his left eye. I want to choose my own path. Live in the moment. Then the Marvel Studio intro comes with a song named Sweet Child O Mine by Guns N' Roses. This song's lyrics such as, And pray for the thunder, sweet love of mine, and, where do we go now, are somewhat relatable to Thor and I would say this is a great song choice by Taika Waititi. We also see some brief shots of Thor's training and this could imply that Love and Thunder will include the character's training montage to return to his normal muscular self. Thor is also wearing a cap with words on it saying Strongest Avenger, which is a reference to the joke in Thor Ragnarok. Strongest Avenger. Access denied. Damn you, Stark. The place he is training could be Niflheim, which is a realm where the Valkyries and Hela fought each other in the flashback scenes from Thor Ragnarok. The teaser also revealed that the film will feature seven returning members of the Guardians of the Galaxy such as Dave Bautista's Drax, Karen Gillan's Nebula, Palm Clementif's Mantis, Bradley Cooper's Rocket Raccoon, Vin Diesel's Groot, Chris Pratt's Star-Lord and Sean Gunn's Kraglin with his own Yaka arrow in a blink and you'll miss it shot. There are some rumors that Zoe Saldana's Gamora might appear for short moments in the movie and Peter Quill was trying to find her in Endgame, but, it's for sure that she will be back in Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 3. Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? It seems that the Guardians are fighting for these blue aliens as a job for money. These blue people could be the alien species called Centaurian like Yandu Udanta or they could be the Interdites. My superhero days are over. In the next scene, we see the Benatar leaving the planet Sakaar and Thor and Korg staying behind to be on the planet. Thor and Korg being next to each other could also be a hint that the two will go on missions together at some point in the film. This shot of Thor called Ravager Thor from the Toy Leaks, seems to be wearing some of Quill's clothes and this look of him could be a throwback to a 90s version of Thor called Thunderstrike. Korg also went on an outfit change, now donning nice new pants, a leather-bound chest part with a massive wool collar, and the golden ram belt buckle, which resembles one of Thor's two goats, which we happen to see in the very next scene. Thor's mystical goats, Toothnasher and Toothgrinder, are seen pulling a boat in the frame and it seems that Thor, King Valkyrie, and Korg are leaving New Asgard and they might be going to the Olympus. I think that this boat might have the ability to travel using the Bifrost from Stormbreaker. We also see this glorious place called Olympus, which exists in a pocket dimension outside of the MCU's home universe, similar to the overview that the Egyptian gods live in. It's so cool that the MCU has been introducing us to other different dimensions like the TVA slash Quantum Realm, Talo, Overvoid, and now Olympus. In the next frame, Thor is hooking up with this unknown blue hair pirate on a boat and this boat may be the one that we saw earlier in the teaser. Remember what 
told you. You ever feel lost? Thor is seen again in this shot and he is now donning a new brightly color armor and his stormbreakers seem to be emitting colorful energy. This may be one of the final scenes of the movie, where our heroes have won the battle against Gore and celebrating. He might get this armor from Olympus or Sakaar and I am excited to see his new helmet in action. Then, we see the interior of Olympus, with lightning bolts zigzagging around until one is caught by Zeus, played by Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? Who had played a comic book role in DC's Man of Steel as Zor-El, aka Superman's father. I think Zeus is going to be one of the many victims of Gore the God Butcher and he might die at the hand of Gore, just to show how powerful and lethal he is. Korg and Thor are seen again in Olympus and they seem to be really happy about something, and now, let's go to the next scene. So, we now see Thor and Korg looking at a giant god named Falagar the Behemoth, who has most likely been killed by Gore. This shot is taken directly from the comic, Thor God of Thunder issue 3, and Falagar was one of Thor's friends, and you can see the pain and sadness on his face as he understands Gore the God Butcher ain't playing around. Then we see new Asgard, which is doing well under the leadership of King Valkyrie and has become a popular tourist destination, as evidenced by cruises, ships, the new Asgard tour bus, etc. If you've seen some No Way Home breakdowns, you'll know that in Spider-Man No Way Home, a news ticker reports a political turmoil in New Asgard, which King Valkyrie seems to be bored and tired of handling. And this may be the reason why she leaves New Asgard with Thor and Korg to leave this boring political meeting. On the right side of this frame, you can see Meek in a suit, doing something. There was also a leaked concept art of Meek wearing professional-looking clothes and some rumors that Meek will be Valkyrie's secretary, and it seems to be true in the teaser. Look into the eyes of the people that you love. Me. What? Just listening. Then, we got the first glimpse of the enormous streets of Olympus in the mythical setting even includes a massive Zeus statue in the middle of town. You can also see that five people are walking on the street which are King Valkyrie, Jane Foster's Mighty Thor, Thor, Korg, and maybe Jamie Alexander's Lady Sif. In multiple frames of this scene, Thor and Chris Pratt's Peter Quill talk for a while before leaving him in Sakaar. Star-Lord has a fuller beard than in previous MCU appearances, and Palm Clementif's Mantis has a new green emblem in the middle of her forehead. Dave Bautista's Drax appears alongside Karen Gillan's Nebula, Bradley Cooper's Rocket, and Vin Diesel's Groot, who is still in his teenage years. We might see an older Groot called Alpha Groot in Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 3. And finally, in the last shot of this teaser, Mighty Thor appears for the first time during Gore the God Butcher's invasion of Earth. It's also safe to assume that she would have arrived late and during the height of the battle, based on her entrance and Thor's reaction. Thor's surprised face could indicate that he is unaware that his ex-girlfriend is now capable of wielding Mjolnir. This scene is also a parallel to this scene in Avenger Endgame. I knew it. Both scenes show that Thor is surprised that his friend or loved one is able to lift Mjolnir. All of the repairs and cracks on the hammer give it the appearance of lightning. And notice that there are cars and houses everywhere, which means that this battle is on Earth and most likely in New Asgard. This is also the battle Thor was walking through earlier in the trailer. I also would love to see Darcy Lewis appear in this movie and it would be funny to see her reaction to Jane Foster becoming Thor on screen. Even though the teaser revealed a lot of returning characters, it didn't show the new characters like Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher. The TLDR of Gore's origin is that he was born on an unnamed planet and he was on the verge of starvation almost every day since he was born. He was taught to believe in the gods, but they never responded to his prayers. His parent, wife, and children began to die due to the lack of food. Grieving over their pain and death, Gore gave up hope and publicly declared that there were no gods, for which he was exiled by his religious folk. 
Gore saw a pair of battling gods, a dark elder god called Null, and a gold-armored purple-skinned god, who fall out of the sky and crash land nearby while Gore was wandering in the desert praying to die. Gore became enraged when the gold-armored god begged for his help and Null's sword jumped at him and slowly bonded with him. Gore killed the gold-armored god with his new weapon, all black the necrosword and he then vowed vengeance against all gods for not answering his prayers and set out. Gore might get all black the necrosword in a different way in MCU and this weapon could set up Null and the symbiotes for future MCU movies. And I can't wait to see Christian Bale's performance as Gore because he is one of my favorite actors and I like most of his movies such as the Batman trilogy, American Psycho and The Machinist. Well, this is it for my breakdown of the Thor Love and Thunder teaser and I hope you get new details from the video. Thank you for watching this video, please leave a like and comment on your favorite moment from the teaser and see you again in the next video. Impressive. Very nice.